Yeah, two years later, would I buy it again? Yes, I would. <laughs> What is going on today guys? Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm welcoming myself back because I haven't been here in quite a while. Let's get into it. I've been gone for a while. I've been absent from the channel. Let's discuss. First of all, too much coffee in my veins or as I like to call it, every single morning. Okay, that being said, today we're going to check out this Ibanez 1070 PBZ. You've seen it before. You're going to see it again because you know what? I've had it for two years now. Still love it. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the Ibanez line, the RG line. Let's get into it. First of all, I need to mention that, yeah, I haven't been here in quite a while. And the reason for it, well, there's many reasons, actually. Um, I've been busy spending time with friends and family. Been taking care of some yard work outside. Uh, been exploring my other side of my creative interest which is my videography filmmaking stuff that's on another channel you're welcome to check it out link down below and uh generally just you know it's been i've been busy working i've been busy uh it's summertime guys right summer you got to get out and do stuff exercise be active do fun things outside i don't want to sit in the studio all day talking to myself that's pretty much the reasons why i have been kind of absent sorry about that i will try to be a little more consistent a little more frequent uh than once every one to two months. So let's discuss the Ibanez RG 1070 PBZ. It looks delicious. Look at the color scheme. I mean, you can't get enough of this, guys. Even if you don't like the modern style guitars, I get it. It's not your thing. But just look at the colors, man. It's sick. Literally, it makes me sick. Not literally, actually. <laughs> Still one of my favorite guitars in my arsenal. I've had this now for a little over two years, so I thought I would revisit it because I have not played it in quite a while. And I have to say, uh, still feels great, still sounds great. And uh, so let's, you know, without further ado, let's get into it right now. <laughs> First of all, weight-wise, not too heavy, not too light. It's just right in the middle. It's that sweet spot where you feel like something substantial. You're holding something substantial when you play it. Uh, it's pretty rock solid. It stays in tune really well. And due in large part, I would say probably to the, what is that? I forget, 11 piece. Oh my God, I got to count it now. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 piece neck. I had to double check because I just, who remembers that, right? Look at that thing, man. Look at it. Look at it. Now respect it. Not only is it gorgeous, but I guess the different wood, you know, the different wood types glued together is even stiffer than one solid piece of wood. You wouldn't think that would be the case, you know, scientifically, but hey, science, right? Can't stop it. Yeah, so HSH uh, stock pickups in this are the DiMarzio Tone Zone, the True Velvet, and the Air Norton. You know, it's a decent combination, I guess. But in this particular guitar, this is a heavier guitar or denser wood for some reason. It just gives, it has a very woody, dense, uh, warm, flat tone to it. So. Right? I don't know how to really explain it. It just has a, I want to say it has a woody tone. You can almost hear the wood of the guitar, the body, in the notes itself. Um, these pickups really don't stand out on their own, I would say, at least in this particular guitar. 
in that sense, I guess maybe that's something you're looking for. Kind of a flat response. Sounds decent. It's not too extreme. Warm, not too extreme. Treble, bright. Uh, it's just right in the middle. I think it's easy to get some good tones with this, especially if you're recording at home. You can get some nice workable tones uh, quite easily with this pickup combination. Now, the neck, com the neck pickup, rather, the uh, Air Norton is pretty warm, but it's still usable in my opinion. So let's check that out. Um... <laughs> Too bad. They've always touted this neck as more of a shredder's neck, you know, shredder style neck, easier to, to maneuver and get around the neck with. In my opinion, though, it does feel a little unnatural. So, you know, it's all personal preference. It's all ergonomic, ergonomics, the size of your hand, the way you hold the neck, all that stuff, right? Uh, if you're doing a lot of stretchy stuff, I guess it's good for you because you get your thumb on that kind of flat portion of the back of the, you know, the center of the neck there, and it kind of keeps you steady in that sense. But otherwise, if you're doing cord work and such, you know, and different things like that, you feel the, the, the funny shape of it. It just does not feel natural. It doesn't really sit in the pocket of your hand as well as a more naturally curved uh, C shape or something like that would. So that's one small point for me uh, against this guitar. Not a huge, you know, not a deal breaker, not a big deal. I can get by without it. I still love the guitar otherwise. Um, what else do we have? Oh, so the zero point trem system in the back there, I'll, I'll have to do a zoom in on that. I'll have to take the plate off and show you guys. Uh, check that out here. Yeah, that is nice for keeping the guitar strings stable, you know, in tune, stable, uh, reliable. You can use a whammy bar, let go, and it pretty much goes back pretty precisely to where it was before you grab the whammy bar. So, let's do it. Stays in tune really well. So because it has springs on both directions, uh, on the trem block in the back, it just keeps it from moving very much. You have to use a lot more force in either direction to, to maneuver the whammy bar. And then you obviously can't flutter at all because it just kind of snaps right back to the note really quickly. Let me demonstrate that now. See? There's like no flutter at all. So if you're looking for flutter, this type of trem isn't for you. You can modify it by simply taking off two of the springs, which again, I'll show you a close up here. And um, supposedly that'll get you more of a looser feel. I tried it once. It didn't really work for me that well. I think I had to do a little more tweaking with the settings on the back there. There's that scroll, that little uh, tension wheel you can use to kind of loosen and tighten the overall tension. So I didn't play with that too much because I really didn't want to throw my action all out of whack. But apparently you can do that if you want to. So I have other guitars that just have your standard trem system on them. And if I want to flutter, I'm going to play one of those. So this one is more reliable. I guess if you're on stage or, you know, if you're recording too and you just want to do some, you know, dive bombs or you want to do some... Uh, just some whammy pulls and let go and you're still in tune. The pros and cons to that system, you know, it's all personal choice. Just play the guitar, Jay, and shut up. This finish they call cerulean blue, and I guess that color is in there within that mix of colors. But in either case, it's just beautiful.
it's a beautiful it's a beautiful guitar it's got a great feel and if you're familiar with how an ibanez feels that's what it feels like you know it's your typical it's got a solid weight to it it's not the heaviest guitar you own but it's uh it's up there um that heel joint is great too you know it's kind of trimmed down kind of like i think they started doing that with the ibanez gems originally like that was a steve Vai special um, I don't know if he invented that shape or what, but now this kind of trickled down to most of their models have a similar uh, reduced, smoothed out heel joint there, which really does help when you're up on the higher frets. You don't even feel it. I mean, you, it's not even in your hand. So if you're stretching to hit the 24th fret and do some of this stuff, your hand's not even touching that piece of wood, the block there. So that's really great. <laughs> I got such a great deal on this guitar used on reverb. Now the guy who sold it to me when he sent it to me, it was a little bit in rough shape. I mean, the frets needed some attention. There was some serious fret sprout, which I took care of myself. And then it needed a little bit of fret leveling and polishing and stuff. So I had it redressed by my tech. Uh, it just cost a few bucks. That's not too bad. And otherwise, I don't know. This thing is good to go. I keep it in standard tuning. I feel like this kind of guitar just, you know, feels good to me in standard tuning. If I want to really drop tune, detune, I'm going to go with something else. I could do it with this, but... I don't know, this just feels like an 80s metal guitar, right? And there was not a lot of drop tuning going on back then. I mean, half step down, sure. Guns N' Roses, you know. Um, who else is doing drop down tunings back then? I don't know, but you know who they are. <laughs> we all know who they are, I just can't think right now. But as far as an 80s, 90s rock metal guitar goes, standard tuning is good for me with this one. It's awesome, it's understated elegance, let's say that. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, 1 to 10, what would I give this? An 11, because Ibanez rocks no matter what. Give me the worst guitar they have, and I'll still make it play halfway decent. Uh, no, that's not true at all. Let's go to some clean stuff. Hang on. Stand by. Be right back. See if you guys remember this one. HSH, um, not my favorite combination. It gives you a lot of different tones, obviously with the five-way selector switch. However, that center pickup is always in my way because I pick way too deep between the strings. That's my fault, not yours. Personal preference. I don't want that middle pickup there. Just get rid of it. I probably would take it out if it weren't for the fact that it have a huge gaping hole. Otherwise, in the middle of the guitar, it doesn't look so pleasing. So what I do is I just kind of screw the middle pickup down a little bit lower than the other one, so it's kind of out of the way, sort of, kind of. It helps. It's got the volute on the back. It's got stainless steel frets. Goto locking tuners. You can never go wrong with those things. I love them. I would put them on every single guitar if I could um, that didn't already come with them. So I haven't really seen another version of this exact model with this paint job, this, this top rather, that looked quite as good as this one, except for the NAM show version the actual nam show model that they were passing around to all the big you know guitar influencers and that was at the show back in 2017 or whatever year this was this is pretty much like the second best one that i've seen uh from all the ones i've seen online other people that you know own these as well online or for sale i don't know i just got lucky
I've been SRG, 1070 PBZ. If you can buy one, good luck. If you can find one, buy it, get it. Trust me, you're going to like it. Definitely hit that subscribe button because algorithm. Uh, that's it for me. I'm out of here. Have a great day. Talk to you guys soon. See ya!